Hey guys, how's it going? I'm MTF Print, and today we are going to have a super special video. One, because it's the first time some of you have seen my face. I know, I'm devilishly handsome. But, we're going to make something that I love. So, fun fact about me is I, for whatever reason, when I started printing, I loved making coasters. I think they're just simple, I think they're nice, you can use them every day, it's beautiful. But regular old coasters are boring, who wants to do that? You just got a circle, you just got a square, it... No, we don't want any of that. We want some good imaginative projects. Something where you'll be able to look at and go, that's pretty cool. So today, we're going to make puzzle pieces. That's right, we're going to make four coasters that each fit together into a puzzle piece, and we're going to do it by patterning one coaster. And I think that's going to be a truly imaginative project where you guys can just let your creativity flow, you know, do it however you want and just follow the guidelines. And hey, you know what? If you like this video and you want to be super cool about it, why don't you go ahead and drop a pick up and tap it. Point is, you should like, subscribe. That'd be really cool. And so let's go ahead and get into the video. Alrighty guys, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do for our puzzle is we're going to want to save it so that way in case we mess it up, which we probably will, we can go back and fix it if we need to. So we'll just name it Corner Puzzle. Next we're going to want to go to Modify and Change Parameters. And what we're going to do is we're going to give our coaster two parameters. First parameter we're going to give it is size. So we'll just call it coaster. And you have to use an underscore because you cannot use a space when naming a parameter. Size. And we're just going to make that about 120 millimeters. Because the water bottle that I'm uh, using to measure is a hundred millimeters. Well, it's about 90, but I want to give it some room to sit there. The next one we are going to do is our offset. And our offset is going to be the peg that comes out of the puzzle is going to be smaller than the slot that the peg goes into the puzzle. So that way there's no friction. It comes out nice and clean. It's super nice. So I'm guessing that's going to be around 0.3 millimeters. So we're going to name it offset. And we're going to make our offset 0.15 millimeters, because if it's 0.15 on each side, that is what your offset will do. It'll be 0.3 by the end of it. We'll just click OK. Now to start us off, so we're going to make one coaster and we're going to essentially rotate it three, four, three, three, four times. And that will give us a whole little like cluster of coasters. It'll look nice on your coffee table. It'll be great. So we're going to create our sketch and we're going to create it top down because it's a coaster. It's going to be top down. We'll get our two point rectangle and we will start at our center point and drag up and to the right. And where our nice integers are, we will just type in CO for coaster size. Make sure to press enter so it gets the parameter and then it'll align it. Press tab to go to the next integer. Same thing, CO, enter, and there we go. So now, pretty much we're about halfway done, honestly. Now we're going to draw the little nub. Our little nub is going to come out of the bottom, and it, because it comes out of the bottom, it'll eventually get over onto the side, and it's going to be a really neat trick. So we'll drag our dimensions over here, just that way they're all nice and out of the way. And you can do this any way you want. The important part is this is your project. Do it how you want. If you don't like what I'm doing, change it. This is all about you learning, doing what you love. So we're going to go to create and we're going to go to spline. And even though I really don't like the fit point spline, I think it's going to be what we need. And we're going to start. So this is your center point. And you can tell by that little triangle that appears next to the X that'll appear on any center point. Just going to pick a point right about here and we're just going to we're going to make a little make a little curve doodad. Yeah, just like that. And when you're ending a spline, make sure to hover over the last point you used. Just press enter. Do not press delete on a spline. It will delete the entire spline and it's it's just not great. 
All right, so now we have our little point. You can adjust it however you want, make it look nice. I actually think that's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna go ahead and manually adjust it just to get it a little bit smaller. Tell about there, that actually kind of looks like a puzzle piece, so I'll take that. So now what we're going to do is we can either press O on the keyboard or we can come up here to offset. And we're just going to select our spline line or whatever line you did. And you'll see it's going to create this red line. That is going to be a secondary offset. Now, what you're going to do is where it has this number, exactly what we did when changing the parameters of the square. We're just going to type in what we named our offset, which would be offset. And you can see it says 0.15 millimeters, so we'll just press enter, and you'll see it looks like it disappeared. It just got really, really tiny. Let's press enter again to lock it in. And sometimes when you make an offset, it will do two things. It will either create more leg inside of the part, or it won't have enough leg into the part. So the way to fix this, is we're gonna extend and cut. So the first thing we'll do is we'll cut. You just trim up here in your modifies tab. Trim off that leg, it'll tell you warning constraints dimensions removed, it doesn't matter. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do, come over here, go down to modify and right under trim is extend. And what that's gonna do, that's going to extend whatever line you got going until it hits another line. You can see it creates that red mark. We extended it, now we've got a full line. So now here's what we got going on. We are about 75% done our puzzle. The next thing we need to do is go to create circular pattern. This is gonna create a circular pattern around this point. And if we play our cards right, this should end up right about here and we can cut it out to make the female notch and the male notch. So when it says select objects, you just select your lines from your spline. You need both your offset and your regular. Center point, boop. And we can just type in four to make this easy. You can do, I think it's like partial, but I mean, you just need this, it's fine. You can literally do that, delete these. It's not going to hurt anything. So now we get to trimming pretty much everything. So you want to go to trim and what we want to trim on our female part is all of the smaller stuff. So first thing we want to get rid of this wall, right? So now what we want to do is we want to get rid of the inside of this curve. So the inside line, trim it. Follow the line and you'll see here, it'll create two smaller lines. Get rid of those as well. All right, we're about 90% done. So let's have a little trivia game. If we trimmed the inside of this line and we need it to be bigger than this line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim the outside of this line. Now I know what you're wondering. Could I have just done that after I rotated it and added the line only to that? Yes, I could, but I wanted it to be relatively one cohesive package so you can see trimming extending at the same time. So, finished sketch. Hmm, apologies. I messed up and it's okay if you mess up because you can always just right click on your little sketch down here. Edit sketch. I was so excited about trimming. I didn't trim the line from the square. And now I did. Now you'll see the dimensioning line and you might think that's a thing. No, if you just move them, you're, you're good. Now you just hit finish sketch. You have one cohesive puzzle piece that actually looks kind of like a puzzle piece. I'm actually really impressed by that.
Now what you're going to want to do, highlight your body, which is going to be your corner puzzle. Press E to extrude, and we'll just extrude by five millimeters. Just, just you know, something super easy. And we have a puzzle piece. Hindsight man! Hi everyone, it's Hindsight Man. I've come from the future to make a couple of changes that would be helpful later on. Mainly, the one thing you want to do is go up to Modify, Change Parameters, because we're going to add a third parameter. And that's going to be height. And we'll make that five millimeters for now. So now when you go to do your extrusion, instead of having a number, just type in height, press enter twice. And now it'll be set to the parameter. And that will come into play more towards the end of the video when I explain how the parameters will affect everything. Cool, see you then. Now, I know what you may be wondering. How does our one puzzle piece turn into four puzzle pieces? And the answer is simple. We're gonna do that circular pattern again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our body. We're gonna to go to create, pattern, circular pattern. Under axes, if you recheck origin point right here by re-enabling the eyeball, you'll see our dot. And we wanna spin it on this blue pole, which is gonna be your Z axes. So click on that. And it'll either say three or four. And then you can see it's filling in a puzzle. All right, cool. You just press OK. And after Fusion decides that it wants to work, sometimes it'll just randomly do it, sometimes it won't for some reason, you get yourself a four-piece puzzle. Now, if you're not sure if the puzzle is going to connect or not when you 3D print it, what you can do is you can inspect interference, and that will tell you if parts are laying on top of each other. It shouldn't come up with any interference, so you just press Compute, no interference detected. But if you are really worried about it, what you can do is you can, and these will say body two, three, four, I just messed something up and they're different. If you are really worried about it, you can slide your timer back to your original extrusion so you only have one body. You can select all of the faces that are not part of the notch. It's pretty much all of the flat faces. You can press Q to push pull offset. And just do negative point one. And that'll push everything in. And then when you go back to your four piece puzzle, you can see that there is a little bit of a gap there allowing your puzzles to fit better. And you can just trace it all the way around. Give yourself a nice coaster. Now, now that I've shown you how to do the four piece puzzle, we can change the four piece puzzle. You just have to slide your slider back to where you have one piece and whatever you do to this one piece will affect all four pieces. So the main thing I wanna do is I want to fill it or rather, I'm either going to chamfer or fill it the entire bottom of this. I'm going to fill it the side of it first. Give it a 10 fillet. And what I meant by that is give it a 20 fillet. And then I don't chamfer a lot, so I think we're going to try chamfering. I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, we'll give it a shot. Select all of your edges on the bottom so that they're blue. Modify chamfer. And we'll just give it a, give it a 0.5. Give it a 0.5 chamfer. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow the parts to fit a little bit better. As long as the bottom is chamfered, you should be fine. All right, guys, I've come back from my time traveling trip to tell you how parameters work. So let's see if I can get it all in the same frame. You go up to your parameters. These numbers are now linked directly to the model. So currently my height is set to five millimeters. Well, I figured out after I was done printing, I want it to be three millimeters. So you'll see if I change it from five to three, the print shrinks. I also changed it from 120 to 100, but let's say I want it to be 150 per square. 
print gets bigger. Using parameters, you no longer have to go into edit. You don't have to do anything super sketchy. Yeah, super sketchy. And uh, you can just change them to whatever you want in real time and it'll change the part in real time. Now that assumes that all of your sketches are properly constrained, but in this situation, most of our sketch is constrained except for the actual notch, but we kind of want that notch to be the same size regardless in case you want to make the surface area of the puzzle bigger, but not the notch. Because if you make the notch and the puzzle bigger, then it's gonna be the same as if they were just the same size if you're trying to get more like flat area out of it. Um, my cups, like I said, about 90 millimeters. So I did a hundred and it worked out pretty good. Plus I only have a 250 millimeter build plate. So I really wanted to have that space so I could print two at a time. All right, cool. Also super important after you're done doing anything to a sketch, always make sure to go in and save your project. So that way you don't lose anything because there's nothing worse than going through all this effort to make a super cool puzzle coaster and then find out your computer crashed. So yeah, I'm gonna print these out in four super fun colors and I'll take it back to IRL me and we can take a look at the final print. And after all that, we have puzzle piece coasters. Yeah, these little things are pretty cool. Well, little, I mean, they're pretty large. These are 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter, not including this notch here. And they took about an hour and 10 minutes to print two of them. So about 35 minutes per, and that's mainly because of the completely flat surfaces. And I think it's got a couple layers of infill in it, but it's still pretty good, still pretty quick. As you can see, relatively flat, relatively smooth, pretty good. Obviously with the textured PEI plate, the bottom's gonna come out a lot better than the top. Uh, you might be able to smooth out the lines a little bit, that might just be my printer, but I am really happy with this. And of course, because they're puzzle pieces, you can take them apart and put them in whatever orientation you want. All right, I want this blue one. It was a little bit harder to do in this box than I thought. But you can put them together and stack them up. You can make, uh, let's see, let's go blue and purple. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. And if you have a transparent material like my glass orange here, I kind of did a little bit of a honeycomb infill and that actually looks really cool in person. Actually it looks really cool on the camera. Yeah, that's neat, I'm into that. This was a really fun project. I, I don't know why I love making coasters and this just seemed like like one of those projects you get in kindergarten where you're super excited about it. So let me know in the comments down below if you made the puzzle and what you changed about it to make it a little bit more unique to you. And hey, if you like this video, you thought this project was neat and you want to see more of it, why don't you go ahead and go down, like, and subscribe. You know, it really helps me out and lets me know what you guys like and what you don't. So I think that's going to be it for me. This is a super fun project, a whole hoot and a half if I do say. And honestly, I think I'm going to use these coasters more than I anticipated. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks for hanging out with me.